How's it going? This is Matt here from Silver Fortune. So today I want to talk about price targets. Now we see these all the time for various financial assets. I'll be talking about silver and gold today. And we see these from from different mainstream publications. We see it a ton here in this space from various pundits, very various individuals, including myself, uh, talking about you know near term or, or medium term. Uh, price targets or prices to watch, but but in this video, I want to focus in particular on the long-term price targets and why I think it's kind of missing the bigger picture. We're, we're missing something when we focus on a long-term price target, whatever it might be. We see we see them all over: uh, silver to to fifty bucks, a uh, hundred bucks, two hundred, two thousand, two million. <laughs> we, we've seen it all. Same thing goes for gold. And, and you know, from time to time, I'll get these comments from individuals that may not be invested in silver, or maybe they're honestly just asking this question, silver or gold, and they'll say, you know, once it hits this target, once you guys are going to cash out or, or you know, execute your, your exit strategy, I mean, what then? I mean, what what is really the reason we're, we're buying the silver and gold in the first place? I mean, really, at the crux of the issue is that we're choosing it over fiat or some other uh, inflated or, or, or paper type asset, right? We want something physical. And so why would we go out then looking for a price target and sell it for the very paper asset, the very fiat that we've been speaking out against? And they have an excellent point. Now, I think most of us, our, our long-term strategy, our exit strategy is to Yes, sell some silver or gold. You know, me personally, I don't plan on selling all of it. But it's going to be more of a trade than anything else. Like, yeah, yeah, fiat, dollars or whatever fiat, maybe used as a middleman if necessary, some sort of intermediary. But ultimately, I'd prefer to see it as a trade for a, a given asset, or undervalued stocks, undervalued real estate, land, um, uh, some sort of investment asset, or even just some other asset that I want or need, even paying off debt. I mean, those are all kind of on the list of things that we're looking to trade our metals for in the future. And so when we put it in those terms, does it kind of make sense why I'm saying that using just dollar or just fiat price targets over the long term is maybe missing the bigger picture. And so what I would encourage you to do, you personally, is to start thinking about this more in ratio terms. Based on, you know, whatever you plan on on ultimately trading for. You don't need to have a rock solid plan. You don't need to decide now exactly what stocks or what real estate you're going to buy it for, but have some sort of an idea and start seeing it through that lens as well as you know, just this the fiat term or, or dollar terms over the, the short to medium term because, you know, that importance can't be understated either. You know, some people would say, uh, stop looking at the price from day to day, week to week or whatever, just buy it uh, to some extent. But also, you know, I think it is important to pay attention to these markets. And, you know, I we still use dollars. I mean, how, how many people could honestly say in the comment section here that they wouldn't like another $100 in their bank account right now? I mean, dollars, we, we still value them, right? Even if we value our metals more. And so paying attention to the fiat terms right now is is still important. But anyways, getting back to the ratios. Set a ratio. Look at what the ratios are now, first of all. So for instance, you can look at the stock market. If you look at, say, you know, the S&P. Right now, the S&P is roughly a little more than two ounces of gold per you know, S&P. For, for for silver, you know, if we did that math of, of about, you know, let's say the S&P, we've rounded up to 3,000, right? 3,000 divided by 15 is what, 200. Uh, so it's a little under 200 ounces of silver per, for, for the S&P because I think the S&P is in the 2,700 or 2,800 range around there. I haven't been watching it as of late. Or you can do the same thing for the Dow, right? And, and set a goal for these. Now, now, again, this can be somewhat flexible over time. But if you're intending on trading for stocks, which some of you may be, ideally undervalued stocks, then set a goal. Consider, you know, what would be a reasonable price point for, for the Dow Jones to fall to and for silver and gold to rise to? Or, alternatively, what would be a reasonable price for the Dow Jones to be inflated somewhat because of, of higher inflation and silver and gold to, to outpace that inflation for, for a variety of reasons? So, you know, 
for instance, you know, if I could put some numbers to this, you know, an example would be to to have a Dow to silver ratio uh, target of 200 to 1. 200 of ounces of silver to buy the Dow average. Or for gold, you could shoot for 6 to 1. You can shoot for 1 to 1. You can shoot for, for 50 to 1 for silver. I mean, those are, you know, you want to make it realistic, but you also don't want to necessarily sell yourself short. Um, but start thinking of it in ratio terms. Uh, another uh, thought on this matter is also the gold to silver ratio. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm a big fan of silver, and I and I think you know it's it's always going to be some part of of my um, total assets, my my portfolio going forward. With that being said, right now, you know, since I've gotten into this uh, uh, silver game, I'd say most of the time that I've been buying the silver, I've seen the ratio as being too high. That combined with the fact that that I'm I'm not a man of of means by any mean means that's that's a funny way of saying it but but I I don't have the money to go out and buy uh, the the larger uh, sizes of of gold which oftentimes come with lower premiums I exclusively have silver right now in, in terms of silver versus gold but you know part of my long term strategy part of my end game is to trade some of that for gold quite a bit probably. Right, I I I I'm I'm loving silver now, especially at these prices, especially at this ratio. But long term, gold also makes a lot of sense too. I just can't bring myself to buy it when the ratio is at you know 80, 85 to one. Right, and so you consider target there as well. Uh, you know, sixty to one, maybe at sixty to one. That's what I have uh, down here. Uh, sixty to one is as maybe being the price point where I start to consider shifting away from silver more so towards gold. Right, maybe not necessarily trading the silver for gold yet, but you know, and then from there, you know, maybe 55, 50 to one, start consider trading the silver for gold, or even beyond that. You know, obviously this depends on what the market's looking at, like uh, what the momentum in the silver versus gold market looks like. And, and another important thing to keep in mind here, I've talked about this a bit in the past in terms of exit strategy. Uh, I made a video about it. And if I could go back, I think I talked some about ratios, but I also talked about price targets. And I, and I almost wish I hadn't because, you know, this is always a little bit evolving for me in terms of how I think about this. But um, when when it comes to to your exit strategy for silver and gold, another important thing to keep, thing to keep in mind is y- you don't have to have an all or nothing approach to this. What do I mean by that? When you ultimately plan on trading your silver, your gold for another asset. You don't have to go out and dump it all at once or dump it all, period. Again, going back to how I said I'll always have silver. You know, I always plan on having some silver and gold in my overall, you know, uh, portfolio, my, my overall assets, right? But what, what I'm saying here is that, you know, you don't have to go out and say at this price target, let's say, uh, Dow to gold ratio, I'm dumping all my gold and buying up the Dow. There's absolutely nothing wrong with, hey, if you have a, let's say, 20 ounces of gold, selling two ounces or four ounces. And then if the ratio further breaks down and you can have an even better price, then sell even more, right? It's it's a similar strategy to, to almost like dollar cost averaging. You're just... Um, ounce cost averaging I guess you know now in some cases you know if you're if you're saying you know what I, I, I have a large stack now it's not enough to buy a house in my area yet but I want to that's my long-term strategy well then you know you're probably gonna be dumping a lot of your metals for that house and it's fine you're probably gonna be buying it debt free as well if you have enough um, but but real estate is another good example of where you can make this price target now this again is gonna vary from person to person it's gonna vary from area to area so you know me personally in northern Minnesota the the housing market up here is vastly different from the housing market in somewhere like, you know, Southern California, San Francisco, or or uh, Seattle, or or something like that, right? Uh, urban areas tend to be higher priced, but not even always. That's not even always the case, right? Look at a place like maybe Detroit or something where, you know, maybe you see them as, as still too high, but but the housing market there, the real estate market there, maybe is not as pricey as it as it uh, is not much of a bubble as it was maybe uh, back in the you know mid two thousands prior to the financial crisis and and you know, everything that Detroit and some other you know midwestern cities went through. But but you know that's another good example. You know your your price target, your ounce target, 
is going to be different in Detroit versus San Francisco versus some rural area in the upper peninsula of Michigan or something like that, you know, just as an example. So, you know, again, I would encourage you to start thinking in these terms, right? That doesn't mean throw out that the dollar terms or the fiat terms. Pay attention to that. That's important for the near to the midterm. But when we're talking about exit strategy, you're not trading it for fiat ultimately. Probably not, I would guess. If you are, feel free to comment and let me know why that's the case. But ultimately, I think a lot of us are, are looking to trade for some sort of a physical asset, some sort of investment asset. And that means maybe we should start thinking more in, in ratio terms, not just dollar terms. And the other important thing to keep in mind here, and I can't believe I, I waited this long to mention it. Maybe I mentioned it slightly in the past, but it's also the, the topic of inflation, right? I, I'm sure most of us would love to see silver and gold at 50 bucks an ounce, but it's also relative to the, the dollar value. And so if we see inflation, you know, the, the dollar uh, lose, lose uh, you know, two thirds of its value, uh, the, the value of, of an ounce of silver, I mean, that the purchasing power is going to be very similar at $50 versus $15 now. So that's something important to keep in mind as well. Uh, when, when people give these crazy price targets, a uh, million dollars for, for an ounce of silver, you know, that's not totally unrealistic when, when you've seen what's happened in places like Venezuela, what you've seen in places like, like uh, uh, Zimbabwe, right? But you also have to preface it, you know, if I'm going to say that that's realistic, I think it's realistic in a hyperinflationary scenario. Otherwise, that might be a little bit unrealistic. We might be, be, be um, uh, looking too far into this, maybe maybe a little bit too bullish on, on something like silver and gold at that point. But, but again, ratios versus just price targets. That's why I think, you know, long-term price targets, uh, I mean, people make them, that's fine. I don't, I don't have any problem with that whatsoever but are we kind of missing the bigger picture here do you agree let me know down below in the comment section as always i'd like to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for watching this video or listening to this podcast and god bless